What's up, everyone? We're back for another episode of Locked On Bucks and Locked On Greece, of course. And still undefeated at Eurobasket since last time I podcasted. Wins over Great Britain and a win over Ukraine and just another massive Giannis performance. We're going to discuss that on today's show. Let's get started. You are Locked On Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Bucks. I'm your host, Kane Pittman. You can see and hear me on this show daily and also find my work over at ESPN. Alongside me, the founder of brewhoop.com and longtime voice of the podcast, Frank Madden. And uh, of course, we thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first watch, potentially your first listen. If you're old school like me, uh, but uh, the only way that you'll find out when the podcasts drop, when the episodes drop, is if you subscribe on the audio platform or on YouTube. And I can tell you, the YouTube comments have been vibrant. And there has been many since Eurobasket started, which we love because it means our uh, Greek fans, the Greek friends have been on board and they've been uh, watching the podcast and supporting us, Frank, which we love because we don't mind jumping on a bandwagon, particularly at the moment when it's an undefeated bandwagon. And look, they they beat Great Britain. They took care of business. But I think for the most part, we want to focus on the win over Ukraine today. 99-79. Giannis, 41. Uh, that's a bit more like it. That's what we love to see. No spacing, no problem, right? Um, that's right. You know, and, and again, I mean, we've talked about before, but just thinking back to 2019 and the you know, the flame out that, that Giannis and Greece had in, in that World Cup. Um, again, Giannis averaging sub 15 points a game, foul trouble, um, you know, Bruno Caboclo and, and Brazil, like, you know, getting arrogant and cocky about being able to slow down Giannis. Uh, this has just looked like a, you know, a the truly fully formed version of Giannis that, that we've been seeing, not just in the Eurobasket, but in all the, the lead up to it, including the World Cup qualifier. Uh, in Serbia, I mean, the only you know the only game that I think that Greece has not won uh, since since we've been paying attention here this summer, um, and even in that game, Giannis goes for 40, the you know new World Cup qualifying record apparently. And in this game, this game had me looking up in the third quarter. Giannis goes on this monster, and I think he had I want to say 15 points I think in the third quarter as the Greeks turn around a seven point halftime deficit and just go on this monster run. Giannis just you know, completely unstoppable in transition. Um, and I was looking up, you know, what what is the scoring record in the Eurobasket? Well, it turns out it's 60, 63 points by somebody named Eddie Terrace, who was a Belgian guy in the 1950s. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and say that that scoring record is not going to be in danger anytime soon. But uh, the second highest uh, number um, is uh, is actually the also the Greek record. And so, you know, there was actually an outside chance that uh, that Giannis could have made a run at that 46 point mark and falls a little bit short because, you know, he rested a few minutes into the fourth quarter. He came out, um, I think, with a couple minutes left in this game, only play as a shade over 27 minutes. And, you know, just again, the, the efficiency, the per minute numbers just continue to be pretty mind boggling. He's averaging 31 points per game in uh, under, I think, 29 minutes per game played. So uh, any concerns about, you know, the FIBA spacing, Greece's potential lack of, sh- you know, shooting and floor stretching, you know, the FIBA whistle. Again, it's just group play at this point. Um, but certainly, again, just Giannis continue to show his dominance and still can't make a three-point shot. I think he's now one for 13 in the tournament from three-point range. But um shot the ball extremely well from the foul line again today. I think he started like he missed a few early. Missed um, the first two, yeah. Yeah, but then finished. I, th- I think he made it. He had an and one on the first play, and then he missed his next mm. two. And then he finishes, though, 15 of 18 from the foul line. Previous game against Italy was 8 out of 9 and was 9 out of 11 um, against Croatia. So just pretty crazy, you know, 84% on 32 out of 38 shooting in the tournament thus far. Tremendous two po- uh, free throw shooting from him. Uh, and the two point shooting, obviously very much coming around today, 13 of 16, he hit a bunch of stuff from mid range. I think he was like four out of seven from mid range, 
um, and even mixed in a you know a Dirk Dirk step back uh, in the fourth quarter today. Hit hit a couple pull up jumpers in the second in the third quarter. Um, you know again just other than the he was 0 for two from three, but everything else pretty much working to full effect. And poor poor Ukraine um, just again saw the uh, the full might of of Giannis when he's uh, when he's really in his rhythm and uh, again he's just continued to get better and better as uh, as the tournaments went on and I don't know how much better he's going to get uh there are now 4 and 0 they certainly have pretty much you know locked in uh we would guess here with only Estonia coming up on Thursday um locked in the the first seed in in group C uh which puts them in a pretty good spot again we'll see kind of how all the seeding kind of works out but most likely they're going to avoid Serbia in that half of the bracket. So again, don't want to look too far ahead, but potentially get Serbia in uh, in a potential finals matchup if if both sides uh, were able to hold up their ends of the bargain in the elimination stage. But still a ways to go before that. But round of 16 uh, would be Sunday. So obviously rest always on our minds, putting on our Bucks hats. And very nice to see that Giannis averaging under 30 minutes per game in the tournament so far played 31 minutes against Italy, but you know, again, has not had um, huge minute loads, which, which is good to see shout out to those 40 minute FIBA length game lengths, right? That always helps. And today just 27 minutes to put up just those monster numbers against Ukraine. And again, hopefully he can continue to do this and every game he gets through uh, healthy is a win to me. And to uh, to be this dominant and be the the talk of the tournament so far, um, that obviously is, just makes it all even more fun. Yeah, you mentioned the ten minute quarters, which uh, I love. We have here in Australia, so a quick game's a good game. We don't need to be stretching it out for hours on end. But unfortunately, there were so many damn reviews in this game because things did get a little bit sketchy. And someone uh, messaged in the comments or put in the YouTube comments last week. They said, "Does Giannis look?" better than ever does he look more dominant than usual and my first response to that or the first thing I thought of is well I'd say the competition level is down a little bit now the top European teams of course that that is going to be a serious challenge for these Greek teams but also they they are playing some teams where let's be honest the talent level isn't where it, it would be probably at the NBA that's that's fine uh, but you did see Ukraine today. It got to a point where, as you mentioned, I mean, they literally couldn't do anything. So they're like, well, let's grab him. Let's push him. And we've seen it before in the NBA as well, but he was just walking to the free throw line. Uh, they were struggling a little bit offensively in the first half because I think when I looked at 41 points at the end of this game and I didn't, I've really struggled to find how to have a box score in this game. And I've been watching most of these games on delay. And so I just sort of, I try and tally it in my head. And I got to the end. I said, 41 points. This is unbelievable. How did he get so many points? A lot of them came at the free throw line. But they were trailing by seven points early in the third quarter. And there was a couple of plays. And I think I've seen before people being a little bit critical of Nick Calathus. Has the ball in his hands a little bit too much. And I think for the most part, this is not a Nick Calathus thing. This is a every single Bucks guard that doesn't give the ball straight to Giannis has copped the same wrath from Bucks fans, should we say. It's uh, just get the ball to Giannis. Get out of the way. But Kalathis had two really nice passes. He had the around the back to Dorsey. And then after that, he had a really nice bounce pass to Giannis on a on a baseline cut. And then he dunked, got it back to one point. And then from there, they never really uh, they never really looked back. So shout out to Kalathis. I think there's a nice balance there. You're probably seeing Giannis get more touches in the post than he would with the Bucks. Uh, but I also think part of that is... There is a lot of bodies in the paint and it's just trying to figure out a way to get Giannis some sort of space or utilize the double teams. Um, and then it's come down to the outside shooting. How do you think they're using him? Because there was just brute force today with Giannis, which we've seen in the past. He can get to the free throw line. But overall, how do you think uh, they've been able to use him? Yeah, I mean, I think... Kalathis, to his credit, you know, I, I think having played with Giannis a lot over the years, mm. relatively speaking, um, I think they have pretty good understanding of pick and rolls. There, there have definitely been games where I think it was an Italy game where uh felt like the Greeks were just throwing lobs to Giannis like he was, you know, a 6'5", unathletic European guy. And it's just like, guys, just just throw yeah, it up. Yeah. To, just throw it up at the square, man. Like, 
there's only one guy who's going to go up and get it there. Um, but then Kalathis threw that nice lob uh, right at the end. Um, uh, and I, actually, that was in the I think that was in the Croatia game. Actually, the the reverse, reverse right? dunk. Yeah, yep. I think that was yep. against Croatia, but that was from Kalathis. Um, Kalathis also hit three threes today, which yeah. normally is his Achilles heel, and I think is what makes him. You know, again, I think he's a really smart player. You know, has his little floater game, has pretty good pick and roll understanding with Giannis. But it, I think the problem with him is just, you know, I mean, we always act like it's a crime playing a non-shooting like center or something with Giannis, right? Bucks almost don't even try to do that, and Greece basically does it for the most part with a non-shooting point guard. And again, you know, Kalathis will attempt some threes, but teams are content to let him shoot fairly open threes and you mix in the fact that, you know, Thanasis has started a number of games. He's kind of fallen out of the rotation largely. Um, your guy, Papa Giannis has now returned. He was big against great Britain. Um, had some hands, uh, had some problems catching, catching the ball, a little bit of kind of a thon maker problem at, at various points in the last couple of games, but um, I think started to figure things out a little bit. And so again, from a spacing perspective, that makes it, you know, if you're playing either, we saw in the warmups, Costas was starting a lot at center because Papianos was hurt. Then Thanasis was in, who, I mean, Thanasis was shooting threes, but obviously that's not really his game. Uh, and now Thanasis getting benched to start the second half of this game with Papianos coming in. It's kind of interesting. Just, I was a little concerned, you know, is that just you know, too much size, not enough spacing for Giannis to be able to carve out room? But I think. A couple of things that that have gone well is you know as we talked about I think some of the pick and roll stuff again not always perfect but they you know use movement enough he's setting a lot of screens at the top and either kind of short roll or sometimes you know rolling all the way to the rim for lobs again you can't do that every time on the floor but that is something that the, I think the Greeks have done okay at and then you know they've let obviously Giannis to an extent just sort of cook from the top and you know. We obviously all have this discussion with the Bucks as well. Is that really the best way to use Giannis? Are you, you know, kind of getting a little too stagnant doing that? But the flip side is, you know, there just aren't nearly as many NBA caliber athletes, defenders, guys that can handle him in space. And yes, there is less space, but it's still something where, you know, you want to give Giannis those chances. And obviously the pull-up three, which is something that he is willing to settle for a fair bit, it just has not been there in the tournament, but we saw today, you know, they, the game got congested at times and Giannis was able to, to settle for you know, kind of a mid range jumper that, that he was knocking down pretty well. So the congestion was not harming in that regard. And then the big thing, obviously with Giannis is always him getting out in transition and uh, the FIBA rules. This is where the, the FIBA game actually does really help Giannis. The fact that the refs are not afraid to, you know, call the intentional foul and give two free throws plus the ball when uh, the defense is just basically taking a take foul. That is obviously not just helpful for Giannis in the sense that he gets, you know, probably like once a game, they're calling that on the defense. Uh, but then on top of that, it, it obviously serves to dissuade the other team from, from just trying to take, take fouls and just slow, slow them down in transition. So, and, and again, in the open floor against the uh, defenses that, you know, when they're not set and, when those defenses don't have the level of athletes that NBA teams tend to have, it's just a recipe for Giannis to obviously kind of run riot and, and really inflict his will uh, on the game. And we've obviously seen him make uh, a bunch of really impressive plays in transition. Just again, you know, these guys, like if you're playing in Europe, you are not seeing a Giannis ever right? like I mean even a facsimile of that guy doesn't really exist in in Europe he's such a one of one type guy there's not even really like you know poor man's Giannis is running around he's just so unique at that size with that skill level ball handling strength body control and just again relentlessness getting to the rim um it's it's just got to be scary uh I don't know I mean I I used to work with a guy who was like six, five tremendous athlete. Um, and we would play pickup with him sometimes. And man, it was not fun. It was not fun playing with that guy. <laughs> he was too good for us. Right. I'm like five, 10, five, 11. I'm not that strong. He was come, come at me. It's like, you're kind of just like, man, sometimes he hit you and it's like, you're fouling him probably, but you're just like, man, I'm, I'm glad I'm not getting hurt myself. 
And that's just kind of what I was thinking of seeing, especially some of these guards, you know, just sort of getting caught out in the open court against Giannis. It's like, man, run for cover because because this dude is just not not like anything these guys get to see night in and night out. Uh, you know, even even playing in the NBA, he's he's a freak. And in the FIBA game, it's it's even more so. Yeah, and I should clarify that when I said before that the the teams that, that I meant on an individual basis. And by the way, you can only count the guys that can really have any type of success against Giannis probably on one hand in the world anyway. So it's no disrespect to those countries, but just in a one-on-one setting, Giannis knows that these guys can't do anything. And then even a team like the Ukraine who had Alex Len, who is an NBA big, no one thinks that he's a chance of slowing down Giannis either, and he wasn't. So that's probably uh, more the point. There was, uh, and when you talk about defending guys, uh, Giannis took a charge today. And listen, we've seen Giannis try and flop before, and it's not a pretty sight for the most part. He's not a great flopper, Giannis. He's, I don't think it's in his natural makeup to flop. So he's he really, you can tell when he's flopping. But this one I thought was, no, it was just some genuine contact there. But even then, the Ukraine coach was just cracking up laughing and going, look at the size of this man. How does he fall back like that? But I thought it was actually uh, a pretty good call. So the, uh, so we've got Papa Pittman, Papa Giannis, and now Floppa Giannis. Is that what you're Floppa saying? Floppa Giannis. Well, Floppa Giannis is uh, even even more rare uh, than Papa Pittman. Uh, I think he got, he got dinged for a... Uh, uh, a tech like an unsportsmanlike you know flopping call i think him and thanasis both got dinged i can't remember which game it was i don't i don't even remember it was in the eurobasket or in the warm-ups or in the, one of the qualifiers but <laughs> um but that, that they was call them funny. quickly yeah. yeah yeah and i i appreciate it you know i mean yeah. again like the the fact that uh they don't really like tolerate a lot of um quote-unquote gamesmanship right i think i remember tyler dorsey got nailed for an unsportsman like for kicking his leg out um, and trying to draw a foul. Um, so shout out to some of the FIBA rules. Cause I, I and I, I personally, I love the, the rim interference stuff, like not, mm-hmm. not having the whole question of basket interference stuff. Like I, I, that's a rule that I've always wanted the NBA to adopt. Cause I just, I don't know. I just think it's dumb. Like the fact that referees are having to guess as to whether or not the ball is in the cylinder and all this stuff. And it's like, just, just let them play, whatever. But um, but yeah. Yeah, the free throw one is is fun. If you get to see a player swipe away a free throw and those types of stuff, it adds a pretty cool element. But when we, we talk about the flopping with uh, Giannis and Thanasis, because it's hard to believe uh, that someone that built uh, could flop like that. And when I think about how built they are, I think about built bar. <laughs> and if you haven't tried the built bar puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. Uh, there's always new flavors and they keep on coming, but that's where you've got to have a taste. Uh, pretty quickly now i believe this one might have been an old flavor but they might be bringing it back by popular demand that's the cookie dough chunk puff so uh chewy texture real cookie dough chunks and of course covered in 100 percent real chocolate as well so it's all the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it plus uh, it's healthy for you which i understand you're going to think that's impossible but it's not not with built 160 calories whopping 15 grams of protein uh so run to built.com you don't really have to run to built.com because you're eating a healthy snack anyway, so you don't need to run and then treat yourself. You can walk to built.com, but uh, the point is get it done quickly because they'll be sold out uh, and get the cookie dough chunk puff. Go to built.com, use the promo code locked on 15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code locked on 15 at built.com. Uh, I was wondering, watching this game, what the experience is like. For Josh Oppenheimer, because one of the things that I do love, whether you watch EuroLeague basketball, uh, but the Euro- European teams, is th- there. there's a lot of emotions. And the Greek coach is, is always a great watch. He's fired up. He's emotional. But so is Bud, should we say. But there was one point late in this game where Giannis looked like he got a little bit of a push, and it was probably the 10th time that it was like he got a push. And uh, the Greek head coach was appealing for, again, an unsportsmanlike foul. And the camera showed him and he was just staring at the at the other coaches and he was just yelling and there was hands going all over the place. And Oppenheimer was just like casually nodding. He's just like, yes, okay, I understand. And I wonder what the experience is like for him, how different it is uh, from coaching under Bud. And also we saw Chris Milton and Vin Baker in the house tonight, which was nice on the broadcast. The announcers didn't uh, mention them as they come on camera, so I assume they don't know who Chris Milton is, which is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit rude i have to say 
Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, people have been asking about the jump shots. You said about his three-point shot hasn't been able to knock them down. It's a shorter three-point line. So come on, Giannis, you've got to start knocking down some of those. But his mid-range game looked good today. It came, he knocked down a bunch after one of the announcers said that he should stay in his lane and not shoot to shoot the mid ranges. And then uh, she admitted straight after, okay, he's proved me wrong for the 15th time. That's totally fine. So I thought that was pretty funny. And then he did the two small celebration later on in the game. In my opinion, the two small celebrations should only be when a smaller player scores on a bigger player because everyone's too small for Giannis. How do we feel? <laughs> Like there was a, like it's like yeah we know of course he's too small. It was a lovely shot though. Yeah, I I'm kind of torn. I, I, I mean, um, I I will always you know and shout out to our friend Eric Name obviously, uh, who always tweets out the the too small gif from yeah. I think you should leave uh, from um, you know, I think you should leave to uh, to when when Chris Middleton posts up a smaller guy and shoots over him. Um, I'm a little torn. I, I I generally don't love it the the I, the, the too small thing. I, I'm going to choose to believe that today Giannis was paying uh, an homage to his his good friend Chris, who was yes. uh, in the in the it's crowd um, with uh, with what it was uh, Alex Lazary, John Horace, Mild Newton, and Chris were were all sitting together, um, and so uh, he was he was giving those guys a shout out. Uh, to and I think that was his 40th and 41st point. So, um, you know, just sort of signing off for for good measure with with a uh, uh, signature Chris Middleton type type of play. But um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, the one I remember is I think John Moran and Patrick Beverly did dueling yeah. two smalls against each other in the first round of last year's playoffs. And of course, like Pat Bev, just like is just you know one of the like just ultimate um, you know shit posters of of the nba trash talkers um you know if he was on twitter we would just hate him i'm sure uh just just again you kind of kind of have to admire it but also just kind of find it annoying but um but yeah it's the full arsenal from from Giannis today and um it, i'm just gonna be really interesting to see uh kind of how this greek team fares once you get to um these later rounds because uh again i think now that Papianis is back uh, hopefully, it seems like Costas is close to returning. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, they become go from a team that in the first couple of games here, Giannis playing essentially as a center most of the time. All of a sudden, they get a lot bigger, being able to go more of kind of a typical twin towers type combination with Giannis and either of those guys. And um, you know, we've seen at various points the just the size and physicality when Giannis has been big on the offensive glass in the tournament so far. And obviously we don't have to talk more about just his physical domination, but, um, but with some of the size they can have Agravanis is six ten as well. He's been, I, I've, I've enjoyed shoot. watching Agravanis weirdly. He shoots yeah. it weird, but you know, when it goes in, it's like, Oh, okay. You know, cause again, those of us that don't watch Demetrius Agravanis very much, um, you see the way he kind of slowly winds up, gets out his, uh, you know, 18th century, uh, Civil War musket. I don't know. I don't know what the equivalent is if you're European of of the you know 18th century Civil War um, uh, musket, or, or actually it'd be uh, 19th centuries if it's Civil War, but call it the American Revolution Revolutionary War musket from the 18th century. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the someone needs to tell us what what war was happening. Uh, that that would be the equivalent um, in the in the, in the 1700s. What was the was the French Revolution going on? Probably. I, I should know this at this point, but, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's been fun to watch and, um, you know, we, we talked about it, how obviously kind of concerns, do they have enough shooting, but, uh, you know, between Slukas and, and Tyler Dorsey, you've got a couple guys who have that kind of off the dribble pick and roll kind of, you know, step into it can be covered reasonably well and still knock a three pointer in your face type of guys. And, you know, Dorsey in particular has been, pretty great throughout this tournament, especially in those first couple of games. So you just hope that those guys continue to make shots and, you know, give Giannis the air cover needed so that, you know, again, teams can't just completely sell out against him. But um, so far it's been a lot of fun. And um, I don't know, I, was, I wanted to ask you, I, I had not really been thinking much coming into this tournament, obviously reading for Greece and all, but I had not been thinking a whole lot about, you know what this could mean. What 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 the odds were of of Greece winning. What this could mean for Giannis from like a, you know, sort of legacy standpoint. 
probably because let's be honest, I'll, I'll be the ugly American, you know, Americans per, don't perceive things that happen outside of the NBA as, as contributing that much to guys' legacies. But I, I think the reality is winning a Euro basket or a world cup or an Olympic gold medal for anybody that is not American is just massively important. And we talked, you know, last year you talked about how huge Australia winning uh, an Olympic medal was uh, in, in the the Olympics in Tokyo last year. And uh, certainly for Giannis, I mean, would not be the first time Greece has, has been, has success at the international level, but to win Eurobasket would be just huge. Right. I mean, that would be huge for Giannis, huge for his country. And again, not saying it would, you know, change the way that American talking heads would perceive him, but, um, but it would be a pretty amazing accomplishment. And, you know, again, just thinking about sort of where Giannis and his brothers kind of came from and all that they had to do to get to the point of representing their country would be pretty awesome. And uh, not to jinx it, get ahead of ourselves. They're not even in the elimination stage yet, but, uh, but I definitely watching how well they've been playing of late. Um, they're definitely one of the teams that obviously I think is going to have a, a pretty good chance at, uh, at potentially winning the Euro basket. And uh, I'm excited, you know, I'm obviously crossing my fingers that it can happen. And um, Hey, any, any more Giannis legacy building that we can get, I'm all for it. And uh, obviously this one would be extra special if, if they could make it happen. Yeah. And it, I, I think, yeah, potentially with a guy like Giannis and probably Jokic and probably, well, certainly Jokic, but, and I'm imagining Doncic by the time he's done, he's still so young, but uh, what you do in the international play obviously counts to Hall of Fame and all those types of things. Now, of course, with Giannis, he's going anyway. He's already he's already a lock, so maybe it's not adding to that resume, but uh, to your point, um, with guys in the past that have done great things with the national team and uh, you think of Ginobili, and what he was able to do in Olympic play and all the national teams he played for, the Gasol brothers. Again, I think it does hold more weight for people outside America. Like to me, all those achievements, all those guys that have done stuff mean probably a lot more than they do than saying that, well, LeBron James won a few Olympic golds. It's like, yeah, of course he did. Like, like who like who cares? Like that's not that's not a legacy builder. But for teams outside of that, I, I think that it, uh, for countries outside of that, I think it really is. And particularly in this tournament, when you have those two other guys with Doncic and Jokic, you know, they're in the mix for a medal. And if Giannis can help Greece get over the top of those two teams, if they if they play each other, um, that obviously means a lot as well. So it's going to be pretty fun. Uh, just quickly, you mentioned Thanasis, and I think he only played four minutes today. And I think that, I don't know, this is just me speculating, but I think he's... he's Pension for silly fouls, I think, got him in hot water today. And there was that one play where he tried to turn around jump shot. He was blocked. It's like, okay, well, you're blocked. We'll just get back on defense. It's fine. But then he tried to, like, swat the ball, got the guy in the face. That was his second foul, and then he never came back on the court. So uh, well, just just the aggressive defense, silly fouls, and particularly in the FIBA game where you've only got five, um, has probably held him back a little bit. But now with all these guys back, it'll be interesting to see whether he plays uh, much more in the rotation. But anyway, one more group game to go, I believe. Estonia, is that right? You're on mute there, I think, uh, Frankie. Just just to that point, 10 fouls in 49 minutes for, for the NASA so far. Yeah. So, and I mean, probably again, a lot of them would be, you would qualify as silly fouls. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think with him in particular, right? And like the, it's a very fine line between energy and kind of right, just right. over exuberance, right? And that's kind of what he has to manage. And, you know, it's kind of one of those things, like, I think these types of tournaments where, you know, he, his athleticism is is magnified in these types of settings relative to the the, the NBA game. So, uh, you know, it's not to say that he should be like a 30 minute per game guy in FIBA, but, you know, he, he should be a guy that if he can just harness his athleticism enough, it's not like they're asking him to score a bunch of points, um, you know, and I think he's shown that at various points through some of the pre Euro basket stuff where, you know, the athleticism in terms of putbacks, garbage buckets, doing little things, right. Um, that, uh, that he's been more impactful, but it just obviously hasn't been there here in the tournament really much so far. And, and now, as you said, with some of the other guys getting healthy, including hopefully his brother Costas, us, uh, will be uh, certainly interesting to see just, you know, a, I, I can't, 
can't imagine he just continues to be a starter who plays, you know, a handful of minutes, right? I mean, if you don't want to play the guy, then then you're probably not going to st- keep starting him. Um, but uh, first three games, 17 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes. So, I mean, he played a reasonable yeah. amount in those games. G- Great Britain, obviously, no Giannis in that game. That obviously bumped his minutes up a fair bit. And, um, you know, but also had four fouls in those in those 15 minutes. It was a minus eight. So, um, so yeah, I, I think it'll be interesting to see just how big of a role Anastas ends up having. And, um, and we'll just sort of see. But again, I, I would expect, hopefully, we'll see at least two Adetokumbo brothers playing prominent roles um, as the tournament continues on, but yeah, maybe it may be cost us instead of the NASA's here. We'll see. Yeah. And the, this great team, when we listened to Harris who came on the podcast and certainly I've been learning a lot just from the people that jump in the YouTube comments, but it's probably a deeper team than I thought with the, And they kept on saying, wait till the guys come back. And Slukas obviously been really important in the, in the backcourt and Papianis and all the guys we mentioned. So yeah, it's a pretty good squad. It's a pretty good squad. It feels like they're a chance. Uh, so it's going to be fun. One more group game. Greek undefeated so far. I'm sure we'll get together and discuss that one. It looks on paper like it should be a win for Greece, but you got to take care of business. And it'd be nice to move on to uh, the knockout stage undefeated as well. So uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, they continue their winning ways because it's been a lot of fun so far. Uh, just before we wrap this up, uh, we thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen every day. But for your second listen, go back and check out the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022, an eight-episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NFL season. The local team experts on the Locked On Podcast Network plus a betting angle from Lee Sterling of Locked On Bets, all combining into one Ultimate NFL Preview. Search for the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. And Frank, I can I can already tell. I can tell you're ready for another Packers run. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to it. You know, um, football, it's it's kind of snuck back up on me. I'm not as excited as mm-hmm. I am for uh, for the NBA, obviously. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the NFL to be back. And um, we'll be getting into gear. We're listening to uh, our friend Peter Bukowski on Locked on Packers here as uh as uh, we get uh, get ready and sort of count down here to, to week one all right we will catch you guys in a couple of days after the game greece and uh estonia